Welcome back guys, hope you are doing great and today in this video I'm going to show you how to create an email and password authentication by using the Firebase and along with that and how to send an email verification link to get the user to verify his email address, right? So over here we're having this nice UI which already showing some email information and saying the status is true because I already logged in with the user who verified the email address. So let's open a temporary email service and let's create a temporary email over here. All right, this is the temporary email. Let me copy it over here. Let's hit the email address and create some password for it. Please remember the password and hit the sign up option. So that will create an account for the user in our project over here. If you click here, you can see we have that user successfully signed up and then that user email address, it's verified status is false, but the user successfully created the account. So if you go to the temporary email and there you can see the email which is coming from our Firebase project. So if you open it, you can see the link and everything. All you have to do is to click this link to get verified your email address. Once it's verified, your email has been verified, you can sign into your new account. This message will be displayed. And then if you refresh back and now you can see the status is as true, which means the email address is successfully verified. So this is how we are going to use the uh, email and password authentication with Firebase and how to send the email verification to get verified the user email address. So I hope you guys are excited to learn about this concept. So if you are watching this video or watching the video in my channel for the very first time, so hit the like and subscribe button. And without wasting your time further, let's jump into the video. All right, then, so let's create a new project folder in the desktop. So let's name it as um, Firebase on tutorial. All right, so let's open it in the Visual Studio code. So feel free to use whatever the editor you wish to use. So let me open the Visual Studio code. All right. So let me bring one more tab over here. Cool. So let me bring it over here. Fine. So now all we have to do is to create the um, React application. In this, in this case, I'm going to use the yarn. So yarn create react hyphen app dot slash which means we already created the folder and we need to bring the all the necessary files inside this folder so hit the enter so that will start downloading the all the necessary files which is needed to work with this and i'm going to create a new firebase project so let's head to the firebase.google.com so that will load the firebase and click this go to console option if you haven't used the firebase before so don't have you don't have to worry about so you need to log in with your Gmail account and click this go to console option. Click it. That will take you to the Firebase dashboard where you can able to create a new project and all those things. In this case, these are the different projects which I already have in my uh, Firebase console. So click this add new project and create this as Firebase of YouTube tutorial. So in the uh, click the continue option and disable this Google Analytics since we are not going to publish any of this up, uh, um, app, the web app. So you don't need that uh, Firebase Google Analytics and all those stuff. So disable it. So this will take a while to create a new project. So let's wait until it's downloaded and it's successfully created. All right, then in this case, my project is already downloaded and also my project Firebase project is also successfully created. So let's go ahead and have a look at our project. So inside the source, we have the app, app.js. So usually we used to do a lot of cleanup process over here, but in this case, I'm just going to keep it as simple as that. So let me open this app.js and I'm going to, let's say control A and let's use the RAFC. This is the React snippet you need to download from here search for react snippets and please go ahead and download that extension so that will help you to create the react application much faster you download this one es7 react snippets and react native snippets so once you download it so that will create a react native functional component over here all right so let's save this changes and let's fire up our server so let's say on start so that will start our development server so that fired up 
and it's opening here so let me close it from here and let's open it over here itself localhost 300 3000 all right so our app has been triggered and now let's jump into our create project section over here and let's click this continue option and now that will take us to our firebase uh, dashboard the project dashboard so over here we need to choose the application for what we created this firebase project for ios or android or for web app in this case we created it for the web app so let's create a web app over here all right so i'm just going to say firebase hyphen auth hyphen tutorial hyphen youtube so hosting i'm not going to worry about the hosting let's leave it leave that part later so hit the register app so that will register your application uh, your firebase project in your uh, in the cloud and you need to install this package so let's copy this and let's open up and let's be create a new terminal and let's say yawn add firebase hit enter so that will download the firebase and let's get back to the console and over here if you get into the build and you can see the authentication part click the authentication part and that you can click this get started option so that will provide you to choose what kind of authentication provider that we're going to use in this case this video is all about mainly all about like how to create an email and password authentication along with the email verification that means once the user provided the email and uh, password and everything we need to verify that a user right we need to verify that email is a valid email or not usually it will not be verified automatically so we need to send a verification link from our end to the server or uh, to the client so that client need to verify their email address so that's the part that we are focusing on this video so click this enable option and click save so now we enable that email authentication and the templates and all those things we'll worry about it later so just for the time being let's leave it as it is over here so then now let's get back to the this project settings over here so that you can able to see all your details about your projects so usually we need to keep all these informations highly secure right so let me minimize it over here so i'm just going to create a new folder inside the source folder name it as config config and inside this config folder i'm going to create a new file called config dot five sorry firebase.config.js all right so over here so let me copy it from here and paste it over here let's import something from the firebase package we imported so firebase firebase slash app and also we need one more thing which is the auth so from these two packages from the app i need the get app informations get app get apps and the initialize app and from the auth i need to get this function get auth function so this will provide me to get the authentication providers information from the firebase project which we created over here all we have to do is to const app is equals to so first i need to get the list of apps which is already created in the project if the apps dot length is greater than zero that means the app is already initialized so let's if it is greater than zero then we need to get that app information by using this function if not i need to initialize the new app with using this firebase configurations so we can avoid initializing the multiple app every single time in the new user it's been using our website right so then i need to exp then i need to create the auth to get the authentication providers information so I use the get auth information i need to supply the app which we have in our hand then i need to export these both objects so that we can use from anywhere so app and as well as the auth all right so now we can use this app and as well as the auth information so if you don't need this app needs to be extracted so you can simply ignore it and just send the auth informations alone all right so now we have that authentication providers information in our hand so let's go ahead and create a nice component where you can get this uh, input and uh, that uh, email and password feed, right? So let's go ahead and over here, I'm just going to create, let's keep class name, let's keep this class name as a container. And inside this container, I'm just going to create a um, input feed, input, 
and this type is going to be the text field alone or you can use it as an email email and you need to use this um, what we can say place folder email here so uh, for if we need to verify the email and all those part we can worry about it later we can discuss those kinds of validations separately in a by using the regular expressions in a separate video this is for mainly focusing on the email and password authentication using the email verifications so then one more field and this is going to be the password and over here let's use the placeholder and let's say password here and let's uh, bring one more button and let's keep that button as sign up and let's keep this button over here as uh, what we can say mm type as a button save the changes so let's wrap this thing completely inside a main tag so because inside that once you log in we need to fetch the user informations also right so let's keep it in this way all right cool so now we have the options everything over here so let's go ahead and start writing the styles for this so let's bring the app.css over here let's bring the app.css all right so i don't need this any of them let's delete it and let's start writing our customized site all right then so let's start writing the coding here okay so let's uh, write the styles for the main tag so let me copy this main and let's type the styles for the main tag over here so width of this main should always be the 100 viewport width and the height we can keep it as auto and uh, yeah display everything should be flex and align items everything should be in the center and justify the content everything should be in the center and the minimum height of this screen is going to be 100 vh so now everything should be in the center uh oh we missed to uh, import the app.css so dot slash app.css all right save these changes now it should bring everything in the center here we go all right so uh, next we need to write the styles for this container container copy it and over here so inside the main we do have this container class so container should uh the width of this container should be minimum what we can say like uh, 320 pixels or something and height it's going to be the automatic height based on its content and padding it's going to be top and bottom let's keep it as 20 pixels left and right let's keep it as 25 pixels and we should bring the border so border one pixel solid rgba 000 it's a black color and we need the three percentage of the black color that means the 30 percentage of the black color and the border radius it's going to be uh let's keep it as uh eight pixels or something something like that all right so every content inside this so it's going to be display flex and flex column direction flex direction it's going to be column align the items in the center and justify the content from the starting of that division so that looks like this and the gap between each and everything is going to be 20 pixels save the changes so now you have some gap inside the each every options all right so let's focus on this input field so we let's finish this styles as fast as we can so main dot container and the input is going to be so i'm just going to keep the width as 100 percentage and the height as 60 pixels and the padding inside like uh, five pixels from each corner oh 60 is too much then let's keep it as 40 that's perfectly fine and border radius it's going to be five pixels and let's bring this exact same border over here and we can say outline as none 
outline as none because you can see when you're focusing it you can see that we're having some outline so we can remove that so now that will not show that outline anymore and the font size it's going to be 20 pixels and font weight is going to be 600 and the color of the text is going to be hash triple f triple five something like this so let's fix the styles for the button as well so then let's go here button so this button is going to use the width as 100 percentage and height as 50 pixel or 15 or 40 pixels and around of course we are going to use the same border radius and border it's going to be none and outline it's going to be none and background color it's going to be um let's keep it a steel color something like this all right and the text size font size it's going to be uh 22 pixels and font weight is going to be 600 and the text color is going to be hash triple f save changes something like this all right so that's a point so now we have completed with these styles now all we have to do is to create a new two different states to monitor the email and the password so use state so let's get the state from there equals to set um this is going to be the email right so email and that is going to be initially the empty field and use states but password okay so set password and that is also going to be the empty states so now we do have two different states and we need to give the values of this so value of this input field is going to be that state value email for this password also value of that is going to be the password save this change so uh, if you wish to keep it as a uh, like what we can say if you wish to keep this as a reusable component we can able to do that so all we have to do is to create const uh, input input field let's create an internal component input field it's going to be an arrow function and let's return this input copy this paste it and over here let's create some property which is going to be the uh what's that uh, mm, label okay we have the label because we we don't need the label we need the placeholder what placeholder and of course we need to get the on change event function so or we can keep it as handle change handle change so this is the place where we need to display that placeholder and we need to get the type as well and this is the place where we are going to use the type property because we need to make sure what kind of type that particular field is going to be type property and for to monitoring the state i'm going to create a local state so use state let's say uh input value set input value as an NT string and i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste it over here so all we have to do is to use that input field over here input field and we need to supply the type it's going to be the text oh, sorry the email type email and we need to supply the placeholder which is going to be the email here okay so here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a one more function so const uh handle change event handle change event because every time whenever the input field is being changed or we are type some text so we need to get that function so that will be called on change on change i'm just going to call this handle change event so this function is being triggered and using this i'm going to update this local state and i'm going to send return that value to the handle change function also which means set input value is going to be e dot target from the target input value we need to get the value set it to the local state and as well as 
send that same value to the handle change also e dot target dot value all right so now we don't need this two input fields anymore and let me copy this and paste it over here type is going to be the password and password here and i need to send handle change it's going to be a callback function and that callback function is going to get the data because when this function is going to return a data we'll get the data over here and we will assign that data view and we will assign that data to the state set email with that data because every time whenever there is a change this if you are typing this that is a change the state will get modified this event will get fired up state will get modified and this handle change function this function will be triggered and that will collect the latest data and that data will be saved into your state this is one of the way to to reduce the number of lines and to keep it more optimistic so we'll get the data and let's set that to the state to the password with that data so now we have the re reusable component will work perfectly in every aspect and let's to for the confirmation let's do the console.log that email and as well as the password all right so that instead of keeping it over here i'm just going to const uh sign up is equals to open it and let's keep this as an arrow function uh, like the asynchronous function and inside here i'm just going to paste that and on click i'm going to call that button on click i'm going to call that method sign up action let's replay the function name sign up action something like this so inside the console let's close this so if you refresh it now we are not getting any warning or over here so let's say if i type some sample at gmail.com something like over here and if i click submit and you can see the value whatever we up type and that is updated perfectly in our state value which means these uh, independent state which we created the reusable state uh, reusable component which we created it's working perfectly for every single uh, state which we created over here so this is how you should create an, a, a reusable component and to write a more optimistic code to update that state value and everything all right so i hope you understand this part and now let's jump into the email and password authentication since we already have the email and password so let's go to your firebase documentation so click here go to docs inside your firebase log project or else you can directly search firebase docs firebase docs so that will take you to the firebase documentation so over here go to the build folder and search for authentication tab and then go to the web in the left side menu and click the email uh, password authentication or email link ah password authentication so to create a new user all we have to say create user with email and password this is the one that we need to use create user with email and password all right so let's go ahead and copy this uh, we need to use this create user and email and password so where is the sign up button over here this is the place since we have so i'm going to use this method so we already have the authentication which is coming from our firebase auth over here so all we have to do is to use this method so let's say await await uh, create user with email and password open it once you have this now all we have to say is to use the auth authentication provider then send the email and then send the password password so that is going to return a promise so use the then method and you will get the user credential inside so let's get that user cred and we're gonna extract that user from here you can get the user from there so all you can say like const user is equals to user cred dot user object so now we have the user object so once the user successfully logged in we need to send the email to verify the user right so let's go ahead and let's check our uh, email template so click this authentication and go to the templates you have different sets of email templates over here and you can customize this lot 
but problem is firebase doesn't support the image of the logo usage or any image kinds of stuff inside this uh, default templates if you want to use your customized templates all you have to do uh, you should have your own uh backend server functionalities and there you can write this uh scripting to send a mail you can have your customized templates over there right in this case we're going to use this uh, default template and this is the template which is having this uh email address and uh, your uh the name the application name and the display name which is provided by the user and the link to verify the uh the user this is the def default template that we're going to use right since we have the user object so we need to send the email verification link to that particular user all you have to say is await send email verification open it and send that user detail over here user right so uh this function it's need to be an asynchronous function ah now the problem is solved right so this function is need to be an asynchronous function so this will send the verification link all right so i hope everything is fine so let's if everything is done successfully let's say console.log uh successfully let's simply say success all right cool so let's try it out let's keep the console over here and i'm just going to create a temporary email so let's say temp temp email let's use this to generate a temporary email so this is the temporary email all right so i already practiced it over here so let's copy this email address or let's change this email address okay now the email address has been changed so let's use this email address to create all right so let's keep the password as sample at one two three s capital so hit the sign up button so and you can see we have the success which means uh our you user it's been created and over here we should get the new email for the verification you can see we got a mail from them so if you click that we can able to see that verify that user right so uh, now we need to see the user details right we need to see the user details to to see the user details we need to use the on auth state change because once you refreshed it you can't see that user details anymore so we need to fetch that so i'll show you how to fetch that now all right so now um we need to create an use effect method use effects open it this we are going to use this hook to so this method this hook takes two different parameters one is the callback fun uh, function and another one is the dependency injections so which means this uh, effect this use effect hook needs to render only one time but there's a problem over here with this use effect hook in this latest versions the local uh, development server it's rendering two times so you don't have to worry about it but in the production it's running only one time right so over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to fetch uh, use the using the on auth state change I'm going to get that active user who logged in in our website and which is active, right? So let's say auth dot on auth state change on auth state change. Using this, I'm going to get that user credential, user cred which successfully logged in. Open it and I'm going to say console dot log user cred. Save these changes. And now you can see we have the user credentials information who logged in successfully and over here you can see the email verified is false right because this user he haven't verified the email so let's go here and click this link and let's verify this email you can see your email has been verified you can sign in now to your new account so this is the user successfully verified the email so now if i refresh this so the detail will be fetched one more time and you can see here the email verified is true so this is how you should verify your email address right so let's uh, bring the user details and display it over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the informations um we have the provider data inside the provider data we have the every informations which we needed 
but I don't have the um, email verified status. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extract so const otherwise uh, const user cred. So from this user cred, I'm going to extract the email and I'm going to extract the email verified status. So and now let's do the console console dot log email and the email verified status. Refresh it. All right, here we go. So now we have the email and the email verified status over here. So this we need to update this thing to the uh, user state, right? So let's create a new new state over here. Use state. It's going to be user it's going to be user and initially the user data is going to be null and over here I'm going to say set user I'm going to set the user object as email field and as well as the email verified field these two things okay so I think this will get uh, this is fine and right after here I need to if we have the user details user details then only we need to render this division and inside this division I'm gonna have a paragraph where to display the user dot email and if the user dot email is verified is email is verified then I need to display it as true or else I need to display it as false all right so now we can see we have that email uh, it's displaying over there so uh, because the user is already logged in so that's the reason uh, we need to add the sign out button also but in this case I'm just going to keep it as it is uh, the container why we are getting it over here okay so let's keep this flex direction as a column direction and now that should bring it over here all right so if you want to make sure this is the current active user so let's try it with a different email now so where it is let's change this email address change it all right so now this is the email which we changed so let's copy this email address and let's paste it over here and again i'm going to use the same password sample at one two three and if i hit sign up so now we can see the email address this is registered to our project over here let's refresh it the user registered to our uh, project and you can see the email address it's not verified so if you go to their temporary temporary email address and if you refresh it over here you can see that uh, the verification link if you click that so that user will be successfully verified and now if you refresh this place over here and you can see the user is verified over here so this is how you need to use the firebase authentication and to send the verification link to the user to get verified the email address before uh, start uh, giving the privileges and all those things to the user. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. So if you enjoyed this, hit the like and subscribe button and please share this video with your friends and I will, just, I will come up with a more videos in the future. Thank you.